Welcome guys, welcome to OMG. Uh, this is uh, a new week, a new show. Yep. OMG. Welcome uh, back. Welcome back as every week. We're here to give you a latest update on the news. I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV and this is uh, Xiala. Tim. Hey guys. We have a lot of news tonight uh, that will be mostly based on news and the uh, latest updates that what we have. And the keywords for the show is news. So Tim. What's the news? <laughs> okay. Tonight so. in the news. All right. So this week's major news is uh, Mobile World Congress, and I think we should start off with uh, all those um, bendable phones <laughs> and all that uh, new um, new hardware that has been announced there. The Mobile World Congress, if you don't know, it's uh, or better known as MWC, um, is in Barcelona in Spain. It's every year at the same time of the year, and you have so CES, which is consumer tech, and uh, you do have mobile phones at CES, but you don't have that much uh, because the focus is more on like TVs and like uh, new technology in the stuff. general sense yeah. of the yeah, term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mobile World Congress is really the show for uh, smartphones and tablets first, and then okay, you also have some other stuff there, sort of connecting to the phone and the whole app. And I mean, they, like you that. have like uh, all the new networks, like yeah, uh, you have a lot of 4G was uh, demonstrated there. For no. bands, for fitness, and mm. yeah, and, and some 5G stuff this year, obviously, because 5G is also the new hashtag keyword, uh, hashtag Bitcoin, and hashtag uh, big data. Oh, big no, 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 not anymore. Hashtag, 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 hashtag ML. Um, yeah, so oh, yeah, yeah, a lot, of course. Um, so, yeah, so bendable phones is the thing. Um, Samsung as well as Huawei were the two brands that were sort of like uh, the forerunners here. Um, so it's not new on the Samsung side that we knew they were up to a uh, bendable phone. They had been used for a while. <laughs> and uh, there was also, um, yeah, some patents and things like that that had been sort mm -hmm. of like leaked or publicized or well you have to submit them to the ftc so at some point yeah. when it's submitted it's, it's open for reviews and when it's open for reviews that's when you can actually get them especially uh, because brand try to announce something and have it in retail very quickly nowadays so they you sort of do have to go through the through the pretty much public process of publishing patents and getting certifications uh, for using bands and other things like that before you actually announce the product so you end up knowing everything pretty much before uh but you haven't seen the actual final thing yet so you know the idea but you yeah. don't know the execution for yeah it. yeah so you don't know <laughs> you you know if it's a good idea you just don't know if it's gonna be great um so that's up to debate still uh those two phones the one from samsung was fairly expensive it's above a thousand something bucks i think it's close to two thousand yeah uh, so it's USD. Uh, I mean, you're in the price range of the basically the most expensive iPhones you can buy. It's uh, actually a little bit higher than that even. So the, the Samsung phone is the yeah. Samsung Galaxy Fold. Uh, it's supposed to retail for 19, uh, 1980 USD and it's supposed to retail for that even though that's the only phone that has been announced that will be ending up in the retail channel. Uh, supposed to feature 12 gigs of RAM. Like this is becoming insane. There's, more oh. RAMs in the cell phone than actually there and, is and, and in most PCs. And it's funny because they didn't really have to put that much RAM. I still don't really get it. Uh, what's the point? I mean, like, if you want to make a bannable phone and it's your first and you want to make it, it's become hugely popular and not just some expensive stuff. Why just inflate the amount of RAM in there? Just keep it pretty much regular. Just, okay, maybe add some more to drive the screen if it's actually any need anyway. And, uh, and then just keep it uh, sort of affordable. But, but it's not the case. They, they went out for the ultra expensive thing and I'm pretty sure they do that because it's sort of trying to create a new pricing above uh, S9 and all the high-end phones which are already anyway above the $1,000 mark as well so I mean pretty much 1500 or 1300 This is not a cheap technology as well, I mean we know we can have that but... Yeah, no, but it just made it more expensive with more RAM. It's not cheap technology but it actually could be cheaper. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. So the picture they share mostly is that kind of like a butterfly thing. So they, it's actually not the whole phone is two phones. And actually, it's like, yeah, two phones. Um, and and it, it was a bit of a confusion for people because you didn't know which one, which side was actually the bendable side. And then so they show you that you have this camera on the other side. That, it looks like, like just a regular phone or something like that. So you don't really know. It's a, it's a mind bending picture, basically. And I think that was sort of the idea they had. Um, Design-wise, it does look like an iPhone. I mean, if you look at the edges, it just looks like any of the new iPhones. Uh, so, yeah, sure, it's an expensive phone, but it's a phone that looks like just any other phone. From the design-wise, unless besides the bending part. So this one bends 
on the inward, inside. Yes. On, on the inside. So when you so, fold it, the two screens supposedly sort of touch a bit. And then you have an extra screen on the other side. Yeah. Which which you see actually in the picture they show. You can you can because you can see where the this, uh, the stuff for the for when you speak, right? Because basically you're not gonna be speaking out in in your bendable phone and the inside of the phone. You gotta like flip it close and then you can talk to it. Just like you talk in your regular phone. So is that how you could get a call? Like you get a call, you're on the tablet, <laughs> you, close it. you close it. And <laughs> exactly. I think you're going to have to close it and pick up. Uh, and if you want to take a picture, it's sort of the same thing. The camera's on the other side. Uh, well, so you, yeah. can, you can do like this or close it. Then that's not, that's not a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, me, like, so you, yeah, you so basically it. have one, one big screen you can fold and an extra screen yeah. on the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, they, they, don't, uh, they don't really show you that much. Um, I saw some videos as well, but it's like, it's not like, it looks like the from what in the review, what people say, the phone on the other side is a bit poor quality. And um, yeah, so it's interesting. Uh, one, one interesting part as well, there's three cameras. So, okay, we are still in the race of adding as much cameras as possible. Oh, I saw news this week also about that phone that had 26 cameras. Or I don't know. Something. Oh, the one with the with the different photos <laughs> yeah. for each. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's a different part of the news. Um, anyway, big screen as well. Uh, so they mentioned the 4.6 cover display. So the cover display is the one you have on the outside, uh, and you can see it's smaller, right? It's the kind of like. Um, has this kind of like, but uh, it looks weird. Oh, like the, the, the top part is the, the this, whole thing about, this, this huge yeah. notch on yes, top. Yes, I don't know what you uh, guys think, but the whole thing about this phone, it, it just feels and looks weird. I don't know actually if it feels weird when you have it in your hand. Uh, I, I, I'd be interested in just seeing that. Uh, and then basically, yeah, when you open it up, it just opens up and then uh, you have a squarish interface. It's not square actually, but it have a squarish interface for Android. Um, I, I, and Samsung said they worked with uh, Android and Google to try to figure out uh, new interface stuff for that type of screen. Well, at that price, like we are close to the 2000 uh, USD uh, price point of the market. That's pretty, that's pretty high. Mm -hmm. uh, let's face it, uh, people were actually already surprised that cell phones would go over a thousand bucks. Uh, now we are over two thousand bucks for these kind of uh, of cell phones. Actually, mobile devices because it's not anymore just cell phones. Like, it's in the it's a mix between it if like a, a tablet and a cell phone um, had an affair and this is how it was. It's you don't really know if it's yeah. a cell phone. You don't really know if it's a tablet. But the tablet, both the, use... the tablet and the cell phone was the tablet, right? All those seven inch, eight inch kind of things. But here, this one bends. It's even more different. So now another take on bendable thing was the Mate X from uh, Huawei. So Huawei, Huawei in North America, America if you're following the news, and there's another, another big kind of troubles as well because they, they sort of like uh, legal issues with the government and all that. In Canada too, because uh, Canada is the one that actually started all this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, yes. The Canada uh, is uh, part of the big issue in there. Yeah, and so basically that one is a bit different. So it, it folds, but towards the inside. So basically um, you have the nice screen, the high quality screen is always on the outside on both sides, okay? So, so you have twice the chance to, to break yeah. your screens or to make like a like a scratch on your screen and that was what we were discussing just I have no idea how you're gonna put a screen protection on that kind of phone. I have no idea. You can't make a case. Well you can't probably maybe, make a case. Maybe that's that's what they wanted to do. They they want to get rid of to get rid of the the, yeah, the, the very okay. bad looking cases. I don't know if it's that. Uh, for sure this falls on the floor, your screen is gonna cost at least six hundred bucks. Because uh, already on your uh, on your on edge, my, phone, on my was it? S7 to... Edge, it was costing I think three hundred fifty to change the screen. To right? change the screen yeah. because it was like the S7 Edge with like the the the, the bended edge mm -hmm. on it. Yeah, and it was like it's so expensive. It's actually cheaper to buy a new phone. It's so like I'm this, sure this it's gonna is... be the same or even worse. Uh, and I now so that Mate X, it's interesting. You see it from that picture. Uh, so from the picture, that's the official, official picture. picture. It's the, the two, two screens are not the same size. So you, you can, can see, see it's not just an effect of perspective, perspective in the picture because it's too small to make that kind of effect. There's actually one side of the screen, so here the left side, that is smaller than the other side of the screen. So it's kind of like you have a phone, you have a one side regular screen, and then the other side is kind of like a three quarter size screen. So it's, it's more like an extension rather than yes. actually double the screen. Which also means you have this little kind of thing on the side there. Uh, which is the other piece, right? The the the, the kind of like uh, the, the missing piece of that second-sided screen. 
Uh, I'm sure that's where they store some of the electronics. Uh, and it's also probably a design thing so you can hold it better in your hand. I suppose kind of like a grip or a handle. Uh, it does look very small to be a comfortable handle though. Because I mean, if right. you... Like cram your yeah. I don't think it's, I, I don't know. It depends of how how heavy the whole thing feels in your hand. Um, basically, they sort of put that as a design thing to not have you know the issue of having the two screens not always fitting perfectly. So they show that in the in the in the whole keynote, and they put all, all the, the cameras, cameras in that little, little hinge. It's, it's smart. smart. It's, it's probably clever. clever. It's, it's an interesting way to do it. it. And, and we weren't preparing, preparing the show. show for me, it reminded me of all the, the, the old Sony tablets. Wait, well, I put up um, the search for the picture. So if, so if you, you look, look for Sony, Sony tablets, tablets on the... On the one of the, the Xperia, Xperia, right? Uh, uh, so the Xperia brand. Or, or the Vivo? No. It's, uh, oh, no, it was just, just Tablet S. S. Tablet S, maybe that was the name. Uh, and it had that kind of hinge thing as well. And you always thought when you would see it that you could unfold it, but actually you could not. It was a solid piece of plastic. Uh, so, so when, when I, I see, see that hinge on that phone, that's exactly what reminds, reminds me. And also, it's the same. It doesn't go all the way to the edge, right? The, here, there was only one screen, not two screens. Uh, but it's kind of like a similar kind of weird design uh, thing. So yeah, actually, uh, looking at the at the Huawei uh, Huawei Mate X, uh, it's twenty two. It's supposed to go for twenty two hundred ninety nine euros. Mm -hmm. I mean euros. That's 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 close to three thousand USD. And uh, there's no date, I think, that was yeah. be, has been 2, released. 2,600 US. 2,600 US for the Mate X. So that's pretty uh, pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, 8 gigs of RAM and alpha, alpha terabytes and of storage. 5G. And 5G. Oh, well. yeah. So it's one of the first 5G phones at the same time. So it's, a, it's a total kind of like a different kind of phone. But yeah. But you have to be fortunate, and 5G is not open in the in the public. So mm -hmm. right now it's well, it's it's fun to see that kind of technology. I don't know if that's gonna be really be used mm -hmm. per se, um, because people have been looking for thinner and thinner cell phones rather than actually just. I think this is just making just... it thicker again. Well, I'm okay so, if it's for battery life, but I'm not okay if it's just to have double the screen because I will either use it always yeah. as a tablet. And if you if you cannot use it anymore on one end, you you have to. I mean, I have a Pixel, Pixel 2 XL, which is the which the, is already a massive, which phone. is a quite big one, but and pretty dirty as well. And yeah. the the thing is, I I don't mind if it's a little bit th uh, thicker for yeah. more battery life mm -hmm. or more performance because of, obviously we used to be overclockers. I mean, we're still overclockers and we love to you know test with the phones. Um, but the fact that now we are back to you have the inconvenience of a tablet with the weight and the size, and you don't have the usefulness of a cell phone. At the same point, you have the advantage of a tablet, of the big screen, but and you have the advantage of the cell phone that you can make call and it's easy to have. And so it's very, um, it's very weird in a, in a way that it's actually uh, an unfolding. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. I don't know, you know, at that price anyway, I think a lot of people will be, well... I have the choice between just buying one of the high-end either Android or Apple phones that are regular phones and a smartwatch of the same brand <laughs> or just get one of those new Benevo phones but then not being able to afford anything else with it. So, um, yeah, it's probably a choice. It's an early adopter thing anyway. I don't think... Uh, I mean, they're going to sell some, but they're not going to sell a lot of them. Not at that price for sure. And... Um, if anything happens to it, it's going to be a really expensive or impossible repair. Uh, especially at the start until they figure the whole thing out, uh, how to protect the screens and how to protect the whole phone as well. Uh, I mean, for me, if you look at what happens to most people's phone, that's the first way to kill a phone is to drop, right? It's uh, breaking, breaking broken screens and falling on the edges and stuff like that. That's how you kill a phone. Have you ever had a phone actually dying just by old age? No, I had the they, HTC they Magic, like, the first one. Mine still works, but it's not. That's broken. the only one. All the other ones broke because uh, they. Yeah, fall you off. replace them where they they are too old. So here it's just making them even more fragile. So I don't mm. see what's the really. That's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be a challenge for screen protector in the industry <laughs> to figure out how to protect those. That's a very good one, Michael T. Uh, to be honest, Apple did the whole bendable phone things anyway with they iPhone were, 6. They were first. They, they were, were first. first. Yes. <laughs> well, it's supposed to continue working after that, not just bend. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I also saw uh, who was that? Uh, one of the YouTubers. Uh, he posted a tweet and he said, "Any phones with enough uh, pressure <laughs> ends up bending." <laughs> Uh, the, actually, uh, speaking like of um, opinions about the phones, uh, Anantech and guys, you should uh, go check Anantech.com. They, they, they have saw the Anantech review is hilarious. They have a very <laughs> good. the title of the of the table. Just, <laughs> I didn't saw that before. It's it's freaking stuff. So guys, phone just replacing Huawei Mate Eight. Uh, suppose it kind of like it's sort of the same specs and idea. That's why they probably did that. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. And uh, you can go on anantech.com. They have uh, pretty extensive reviews. Um, yeah. Very known one. And by but the it's way, it's not reviews. It's uh, it's a hands on, hands on, uh, hands on from the mm -hmm. conference. Yeah. Uh, yes, exactly, uh, Chiro. That was uh, MKBHD. Oh yeah, that, that was that. it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, he well had that's a, he had the bended cardinals so not so long ago as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you guys don't understand that, you should go uh, check, check his, his channel, YouTube, yeah. channel, YouTube channel. All right. Uh, New phones, new technology that was like all over the place. Oh yeah, that's so cool. Um, what does the press think about that? Uh, once again, go on adontech.com. They have this. Uh, they asked the press what they were thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, some people had some very strong opinions. Uh, obviously, uh, Charlie is uh, very well known from Semi Accurate for having a very strong opinion. I, I'm gonna read it because um, if someone is listening to the podcast, um, he says all foldable phones are stupid. For now, anyway, but the Mate 8 looks like the smartest potential design. And I agree with him, I think. I agree not on the stupid part, because I don't think anything, nothing is stupid, especially if you're trying something new. But um, I think it's, uh, it, is, it is the one with the kind of hinge thing uh, that is sort of like interesting and looks the best. It's just I don't like the fact that the screen is on both sides, but... Um, that's, uh, I would like to see that for the for the smartwatch and bracelets. There's actually one bracelet that is oh, made that, out of three yeah. bendable part of the of the screen. True, yeah. So it's three. Uh, is that three or two? Yeah, I, I think, think it's actually, three curved yeah? screens is it three curved to make a bracelets around that us the cell phone. But it's not really well. flexible, right? It's no, not, it's not flexible. It's, not it's, bendable. it's bendable. Ish, so yeah. so basically, you can remove it yeah. by bending it without and put breaking it in back, screens, without breaking yeah. it. Okay. Still. That's going to be pretty expensive to go around with that. And, um, well, you have to be careful. And there's no, no casing. And we discussed about all that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, let's move on. Uh, what's uh, the next topic that we have for tonight? And that's going to be uh, AMD. AMD News. It's been a... Uh... Okay, so the, the AMD News is actually not completely news because it's uh, based on some stuff that was already announced during CES this year. So it's just a sum up. So it turns out we're at this yeah. uh, sum up about AMD Ryzen 3000 series, uh, all the rumors, the release dates. Yeah, it's uh, kind of like a recap of what's the state of the Ryzen uh, moment at the moment. They should make it a series called like Catching Up with Drama. Uh, yeah, it's not really drama. It's just, uh, so you know, so companies, are, everyone is trying to announce something during CES because you need to exist during CES. It, it is true, a lot of brands have this... Uh, compulsory thing that you do need to do something at CES and I understand the big brands uh, there's all this thing at CES that if you don't attend one year then it's hard to come back to the show as well because it's a very popular and difficult show to get a, a big booth and stuff like that or reserve rooms so you end up just doing something every year because you do need to do something otherwise you book the room for nothing um, so basically the recap all the facts and all the maybe less facts there are about whatever AMD is up to and it's all about the 3000 series CPUs. So the, when we prepared the show, we had this whole debate about how do you call it? So is that um, the, the, the third third generation Ryzen, which is correct? Is that Ryzen 3000 series? I, 3000 think, it's, series? I think that's the way you should talk about it. That's correct as well. Yeah. But that's not Ryzen 3, because Ryzen 3 is actually a kind of product. Yeah, so uh, it, it's not Ryzen Zen 3, because it's actually based on Zen 2. Mm -hmm. And Ryzen second second generation Ryzen two thousand was actually based on Zen Plus, not Zen two. So like all that is yeah, I think there's a yeah a, well, a conflict of naming. But as long as you, it's the th AMD third generation Ryzen or Ryzen three thousand series, I think, I think it, it's yeah. pretty okay. To For me, it's way. easier to say three thousand series because like that you see it's from the number of the model of the CPU, and you don't also get confused on top of that with Ryzen three, Ryzen five, Ryzen seven, Ryzen nine, which are the sort of like catch, uh, segments or categories of CPUs that they got. Um, 
Uh, okay, so basically what there is to remember from that article is the table they have in there where they recap everything that was sort of announced at CES. Uh, and then the things that they got more or less dates and confirmations are rumors for when it's going to be available. So there's some stuff that is going to be available Q3 2019. So it's still far away. Uh, and there's uh, maybe like some stuff also in May 2019. Uh, they updated some prices, but I don't think there's that much new stuff there. And uh, yeah, I, there's I, a... I like the uh, the Ryzen 3 3300. Yeah. So well, that's going to be like 3333. Three, three. They, a, they do. They should do like a special edition, like Ryzen three thirty three hundred thirty three, mm -hmm. just just to, to piss off everyone on on, on naming. Uh, one thing was allegedly going out in May twenty nineteen for the top of the range one. That's um, the idea. Basically, it's wait and see. That's supposed to be on AM four as well. So the same circuit, the same platform, and basically just a, a nice upgrade. But there is a bump in terms of numbers of cores. Uh, available on the CPU. So what we could expect is that AM4 motherboard, yes, will be compat. Uh, the circuit will be compatible. That will be the same one, but there will be a restriction on the VRM design of the of the different uh, motherboards. Uh, which every time you increase and bump the, the number of cores, then you need to have more power. You need to have more um, uh, cooling and, and so mm -hmm. on. So can't wait to see that. If it, if that's gonna be May twenty nineteen, that's gonna be uh, in two months from now. Actually, it means, from uh, now. it means we're gonna hear about it again, probably around the Computex time or just before that. Actually, Computex is starting end of May. This well, year. yeah, and like you mentioned, if there are motherboard revisions, then it means they will be there at Computex for sure. I just hope they're going to wait Computex and not you know just as usual announce everything two weeks before. Um, the whole fun of going to Computex is to go there and see something new. So if you announce everything before, it's like, eh, what, why are we doing those shows? You know? And um, it's just like everything. If you want to give a good reason for people to go, then wait. But everyone wants to do their stuff first. And the whole point of the, the Ryzen 3000 series is that it's, uh, it will feature 7 nanometer part in there as well. Uh, even though that's not going to be a monolithic core, there's going to be like two uh, pieces of silicones on the same package. Still, that's going to be the first consumer market mm -hmm. uh, available CPU with 7 nanometer. Yeah, yeah. Some people think it might be 7th of July because 7 nanometer on 7.7. 7. 7. Yeah, uh, I saw that uh, rumor as well. Uh, I don't know. No idea. I, I haven't think, been I invited, think so. You need to ask seven persons. And if you have seven confirming sources, that might be actually true. True. Would that be the seventh wonder? At the seventh wonder? I don't know. I'm, yeah, which, more than seven, right? I don't know. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea. Seven wonder, that's a game. Yeah, but it's so. not, isn't there also like uh, buildings around the world, the different wonders of the world? I don't know. Everyone is claiming they have wonders. Oh, okay, well, so, it's, it's just like world records and stuff. I think I think there are some like I think Taj Mahal is one. I think like yeah, the, yeah, that's uh, it. That's what the I mean. pyramid the of pyramid, Giza in yeah, Egypt yeah. or some, but I don't know. I don't know how many. Uh... Uh, let's check what are the seven wonders in the world, or the more than wonders of the world. Uh, how many do you think there is? I thought it was seven, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's more. What in like Alexandria? Uh, the library, the library or something. Well, it's an official thing, but uh, I think maybe UNESCO is. So wonders them. of the world. How many of them? Uh, uh, various list. Oh, various list. <laughs> First, it depends on your opinion. <laughs> Okay, well, let's just forget it then, because it's all completely... Yeah, ancient. but basically you have the Colosseum in Rome, you have yeah. the Great Wall of China. They are not ranked. The Great Pyramid of Giza, yeah, yeah it's not. It's so not it could not be launched at the 7th one, that's all I wanted to... There's something in Sofia that I... Oh, Sofia yeah, Stone Age, I, yeah, okay. Uh, Stone Age in UK, Machu Picchu, interesting. Yeah, because they had to build that up there, and no one knows how they did that. Yeah, actually, I was there uh, a year ago, and they still aliens. don't really understand. It's aliens. Everybody knows. <laughs> no, 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 it was aliens. Uh, Taj Mahal is in there. Uh, mm -hmm. The Empire State Building in there. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How can it be a wonder? Golden I mean, Gate Bridge. Yeah, it was one of the big. Victoria's Fall. Victoria's Fall. Is that? It's bigger Ni than in Niagara. It's uh, Victoria. It's um, where is that? Is hey, it, is it not in Africa? I think it's in Africa. Somewhere. Victoria's Fall. It's at the end of the nine. Hmm. Somewhere there, I think. Eh. Yeah. Eh. The CN Tower in Toronto. Really? Uh, what? Chichen Itza in Mexico? Ah, Actually, okay, it becomes like uh, political here. Uh, <laughs> just adding random stuff and like churches. It's like, what the heck? 
the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights? Yeah, I, I, as a French, I would say if Paris is not in there, it's probably fake. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, come on. Okay, so basically, Seven Wonders of the World depends on where you get your list. Yeah, Mikulti, you're probably right. Anyway, it probably is not nailed down yet. And I'm pretty sure it's the case. Uh, seven nanometer probably at that scale if you want to do also worldwide production and be able to do everything they want to plan out to do with that it's not going to be uh, like a one shot thing so we'll see wait and see wait and see all right uh, back to the news uh ltx 2019 is being uh tickets are actually on sales for it since i think two days from now on so ltx 2019 that's the uh, show and the uh, the festival organized by the guys at Linus Media Group, so the guys behind Linus Tech Tips, uh, uh, Tech Quickies, and so on. Uh, this year, that's gonna be teaming up with DreamHack, yeah. mm -hmm. and they will be featuring. Uh, I think it's 400 or 500 uh, BYOC LAN party. So if you have a if you want to bring your own computer and play some games, uh, that's gonna be good. And they announced as well that that's gonna be open uh, overnight. So you can basically so it's an spend... actual LAN party. So it's a real LAN party yeah. in the real sense of the term. Uh, really, yeah. no limits. Because in the past they had some PC playing area, but it was not like a LAN party. Mm. So that's the okay. case. So that's why they teamed up with DreamHack pretty, pretty much. I wonder if uh, DreamHack is going to host any tournaments there or if it's just going to be, okay, there's the DreamHack LAN and it's part of the event as a first trial. Or, or if there actually is going to be some official tournaments of the DreamHack circuit being hosted there. No I idea, because usually uh, DreamHack in Montreal has official tournaments and uh, there's stuff like... Uh, but that's, a, that's an official DreamHack. It's Why, an official DreamHack, Well, actually DreamHack, yes. the, especially for mm -hmm. folks yeah. in Montreal that we know, they do they do help out quite of the of the few other events. Maybe uh, something that's going to be announced later. We'll uh, see. I mean, I, I mean, it's pretty late. I mean, that's going to be end of July. We're just beginning of March, yeah, so yeah, we yeah. still have a few months up front. So it's in Vancouver. It's at the convention center. Uh, so it's cool because uh, actually other events like that around there in Canada, there's nothing. Uh, and uh, the only closest event that is like that will be PAX, where you also have a LAN and the convention. But the uh, BYU just, uh, at PAX is not the same way. Oh, uh, it's completely different. And the show anyway, it's more pop culture and more like arcade games and uh, board games. Um, I mean, it's all games in general. Um, and I think the one, uh, the LTX, is just going to be mostly focused on PC, PC gaming and DIY. So, very cool. So um, that's pretty interesting. The tickets range from $30 to $80, yeah. uh, unless you want to be VIP at 400 No, I think it's uh, pretty affordable. It's mm -hmm. actually um, super cheap. It is pretty cheap for a LAN party. Those uh, are 30 bucks US? No, no, I think or it's uh, Canadian dollar price. Oh, it's a USD, yeah. Oh, USD, yeah. Without taxes so for, and uh, so extra fours. fees, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Another, you uh, expect to have a, a good, like, 10, 15 bucks of fees and a good 50% no, of taxes. Uh, you know, if you compare to pricings, like uh, what uh, DreamHack sells for in Montreal, uh, for like, uh, well, it's a three day event, uh, but. Um, it's just for like 140 bucks. No, here. I think it's uh, it's fairly affordable if you compare to what you pay also for packs and uh, those conventions. Uh, <laughs> when you can get the tickets. If you can get the <laughs> ticket uh, for one day, um, you pay way more than that. It's above the $100. Um, so no, I think it's uh, it's definitely good they have that. It's a good opportunity for gamers in the area there. Uh, and at that price, you can almost also consider traveling there because the entrance being so cheap or relatively cheap, um, if you're a big fan of Linus and the Linus Tech Tips channels and you always wanted to attend a LAN party and combine both for a good deal, then it's and a good deal. Looking at the, uh, the trends for the past two years, that's going to be the third year they do it. And looking at the trends, uh from last year and the year before uh that's gonna be fun mm -hmm. that, like honestly uh that's that's gonna be a very fun event and there's gonna be quite a few people from the industry uh other tech tubers and so on i know i mean we know already they they announced that they, they were talking with others uh, as well so we'll see how that turns out mm -hmm. and if you're in the vancouver vicinity around the end of july that's where you should be going yeah they're gonna have some workshops and other things as well. Uh, so, it's also, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. It's cool. We'll see. All right, next topic for tonight uh, on the hardware as well Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB RAMs. Uh, the Corsair Dominator, Dominator new, new Platinum. Ones, ones. So, that's new ones. The Dominator Platinum are actually the top high end range, uh, range from Corsair. And they're relaunching the Platinum with the full RGB. Um, 
Spectrum or Aura or they however you want to call it. They basically change the technology for the LEDs. But the technology of the LEDs inside, as Tim said, uh, is a new one. It's called Capelix LED that was presented during CES. Mm -hmm. And it's now available uh, like fully. Uh, what is changing? So instead of having just one big uh, LED strip uh, with different LEDs, we basically now have one a square with a lot of small LEDs that can be yes, addressable. Small display, pretty much. It's it, it it does act like a like a display. Uh, if you go to, for example, a concert, or if you go to a club, like a high end ones that have like big screens in there. This is not LCD screens. This these are LED screens. This is basically the same thing, but put in a very small and tiny package that can now be fully addressable. So it's good because you can do a lot of things with it. Uh, but it's complex because you can do a lot of things with it. Yeah, it's. Um, I think what is interesting about it is that the kind of effects you're going to be able to do in terms of uh, switching from colors, uh, it's going to be way more smooth. You're going to be able to probably do nicer and more interesting combinations. Um, if you're seeing RAMs already when they do the transitions of colors, so very early RGB RAMs, it was bit stuttery was not completely fluid and then you had um for example you had the g-scale trident ramps that had this kind of like a plexiglass kind of like a um, smoked cover mm -hmm. on it right to, to to smooth out the difference yes. between the, the and, LEDs. It, and it was a sort of like a, a hardware kind of like feel to it but you could still you can still see the individual leds behind it because actually we can see it right yeah, here we, because we, we actually in, uh, in the PC there, in the, in the uh, i don't know how many you have i think you have like 16 of them or something like that on the whole, the whole thing and then so basically you do you have to more put more leds if you want to make it totally smooth but here because it's already like so many of them in the, each of the squares you can see on there uh it's gonna be like uh, gonna be totally cool and i i all i want to see now is see what to what extent you can customize that how the software works with that um and obviously how does it work with the rest of the components in the system which is sort of like the key thing for uh, people that use rgb it's not just to have your ram it is have every everything else so mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, the the next thing I want to test and try and see. Uh, on the RGB side, uh, it's good to have RGB everywhere. It's better if you can choose the color. It's even better if you can address them, which is exactly the case mm -hmm. here. So each you can pick up, and each of the LED you choose uh, how they light, how you know uh, how much power they they will light up, and so on. Uh, but from my perspective and from my uh, experience uh, configuring different systems for demonstration and so on. Uh, the biggest challenge is not in the technology to use the LED. No, it's it's in the whole system to make it work. Because everyone has its own system, uh, even though there's some open SDK, it's not that everyone is using them and sometimes it's uh, not implemented the same way. So in my opinion, that's great. Uh, we might not be able to do more than actually that, which is very good. Now the differentiation will come down to to the software and how it's it is yeah. integrated and uh, and uh, the how they integrated it in terms of design right so they do it by this kind of square things um, what is the next thing do you imagine for that well it's gonna be LED screens completely like plastering the whole segment of your LED your your RAM there so without being squares but the whole strip completely right and that's sort of like where it's going to go. Um, I wonder it's, if you, I wonder if you could display an, im an image on it. Yeah, there, there's no reason. I mean, Corsair or Elgato already does it uh, in the small key switches mm -hmm. for the um, for the, the stream deck. Right? It's 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 not the same tech. It's OLED. Um, it's different, and actually, uh, the the precision in terms of density of LEDs is not that high, right? Mm -hmm. So you do see very clearly the pixel here from the pictures. I don't know if there's a kind of like a there's small, a small thing there's small cover. So there's one, so it's already blending mm -hmm. it as well. Uh, but I don't know if without you would actually be able to see them if they are close enough or not, um, because they have a. Is it on this article that they have the? Um, uh, no, that was is on another the... one. Right? Oh, I have it here on the Verge. Is it the one from the Verge? Yes. Mm -hmm. so you can see the little. Um, oh. where they basically try to con compare the regular LED strip, where you see the big LEDs and the new tech that they have. Uh, so the density is definitely smaller. I don't know if it's actually more dense than what you have in the Stream Deck. No, uh, Stream Deck is OLED. So OLED I mean be... the density of the points. Yes. So the, the DPI will be uh, higher in the deck because of OLED. 
Uh, but OLED is extremely expensive as yes. well. And I, that's good you bring up that point because what I would love to see now is to have keyboards with that kind of LEDs. So it's not a screen anymore, it's just addressable LEDs. So and the whole then key will be like that. And the so whole you can change key is the font on, on your keyboard. You can change the keyboard, you can change the sign on it. Yeah. Well, can change the sign on it. You know, if you think about it, um, for sure the future is going to go this way for two reasons because the, the whole PC industry and hardware in general is all about scale, right? And how much units of the same thing you can produce to get the lowest price in your factory and basically make hopefully the most margin or drop the price of your products. Uh, if you think about a brand that does laptops, uh, so that have a product with a keyboard, imagine how many different types of keyboards there are in the world and all the different SKUs you have to make just because every region uses a different keyboard. Even here in North America, Canada and the US don't even have the same keyboard. Even in Canada, we have three types of keyboards. Yeah, you have the Canadian Quebec ones, which is different actually, even though they are speak French from the French one, because <laughs> they use basically QWERTY, but with some weird arrangements to fit in like special French characters. Um, and then you have the English speaking Canadian one, which and, is sort of different from the US and one. And there's the multilingual one that is supposed yeah. to be the same as the US one, but have some specific codes and uh, stuff written on it. But I think the most common one here in Canada is still the US keyboard. Because yes. a lot of friends just don't care and they just sell the, the US keyboard here. And, and if you talk with us online, like on Discord or on yeah. Twitter, that's why sometimes we don't have like the. Uh, the apostrophe? Like ah, the I, sometimes I just don't even write them anymore. Even in so French, you don't have the accent? Even in French, I just don't write it. I assume that if my uh, uh, operating system or wherever I type my text can by itself detect and type in French and add the accents by himself, I just don't care. It's just the software is shit. It's not, it's not me that I should like, spend three seconds figuring out where to type. Well, you have other issues. Like, for example, you have the, the tiles in, a, in, yeah. in Spanish. And oh, but some words you can put it, and some words you cannot yeah, put but it. Yeah, the so. OS should detect if you're saying a Spanish word, then just fill in the gaps. And just like when you type on your phone, right? When you type on your phone, it just fills it. It knows what language you you write. Do you actually type all the the complete words on your phone, or you type the beginning and you you autocomplete? Uh depends. It depends. So uh, the autocomplete, I think, um, it depends on the OS, and it depends what kind of keyboard you use. So if you use the swipe keyboard, you end up more often. Just swiping the whole word, I think, for me. Yeah, actually. because you can't stop in the middle. Uh, you can because it suggests as well, but it's uh, it's not so well. I don't know. I don't. I, I mean, once it, once you add it, you just keep swiping away. But if you don't do that and you type the letters, then uh, if the recommendation pops up and it's the right one, which is two different things, then uh, then yeah. Another part with auto recommendation is the detection of the language. And sometimes if you just start typing one word, it's not enough for the OS to know. What language you're, <laughs> you're typing in. That's, that's, that's so me, why you... Me, it just you, recommends me the wrong word. And then if I, <laughs> I select that, then automatically it thinks the next one are going to be in that mm. language too. And then it screws up the whole thing. So it's like, uh, yeah. And it works better on my computer than on the phone for some reason. So. Well, my cell phone is completely nuts on that. I, 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 write, in, I write in French and English yeah. and I'm learning Spanish. Yeah, then so you mix up all the dictionaries yeah, together, yeah, yeah. you customize the English one with Spanish words, and then it's... Uh... <laughs> it, it doesn't... It, yes. it, it's not there yet. Yeah, it's not there. Anyway, we're talking about RGB and RAM, so totally a different topic, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, actually, speaking of a uh, of thing that, that just works, uh, in the Tom's Hardware article we discussed just earlier, there was this uh, It Just Works title. Mm -hmm. yeah. I kind of like it. All right, um, some other news. Intel announced the first Cantium computing testing tool. Quantum. 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 What did I say? Kentum. Kentum. This, is, this, is, this wanna... is the French accent coming up. So what is cool about that article is that they actually show a quantum computer just like it looks like right now today. And I'm pretty sure they photoshopped everything around in the room. So it does look like something you can sort of put in your living room. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally it, unpractical to have a quantum computer still somewhere, but you know it reminds me of the old days when you had like those uh, old like uh, not data centers because back then it was just one single computer that could just do plus and minus and maybe some more complex calculations. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a little industrial piece of uh, science uh, where you have uh, basically vacuum chambers, you have a uh, helium cooling probably, you gotta recycle that, recompress it, separate it, whatever. Uh, all that to yeah try it, uh, to do some calculations that are quantum. Actually, if you remember about our first show, we talked about CES and mm -hmm. how we uh, we saw the first real like being close to it, the first quantum uh, computer uh, from IBM. 
but that was just one part of it. That was just the, the core for it, basically. Uh, what you don't, what we did not saw was the the whole stack yeah. of of racks needed to to make that and the wires and everything. So kudos for posting that pictures. It looks good. Uh, definitely, it looks like it's been cleaned out. They also call things. it a cryogenic wafer prober. So. Is it actually the whole quantum computer or is it just a small segment of a testing thing they have for it? So, right? that's the trick. This is not a full quantum computer. Yeah, this is This is what is needed to make it happen. Okay. But to make sure that the qubits, which is the like, kind of like the, the qubits, the uh, calculation uh, things, like your, basically your, like the transistors in your the wafer, that, right? Oh, so yeah. you're testing the wafer to make sure uh, that the qubits are actually correct, mm -hmm. uh, and normally to test that you need you need a lot of times. So I think it's uh, it's a matter of a few months and multiple weeks to do that, and they basically shorten that to uh, to a few a few days, a few because weeks. Because it's automated and it's automated, and, and it's controlled environments. And keep in mind, to do quantum computing, you need to be close to zero Kelvin, which is uh, like liquid Vac helium, vacuum space. vacuum space. It's it's insanely difficult to do, and uh, we're not there yet to have that in a cell phone. I think we're probably never gonna have it. But who knows? Like at least to have that in a more available um, kind of uh, solutions. I mean, everyone is working on it. IBM is working on it. Intel is working on it. Uh, Google is working on it. All yeah. these big companies are working on quantum computing because it can solve a lot of problems that we can't compute literally with the actual uh, compute system that we have today. Even if you cluster them by millions, you still don't get it. Yeah. And so basically that unit, the mm -hmm. testing tool, is actually uh, making sure that the wafer uh, is correct before they used to put that in the chip. So you test the part to make sure that it's completely working before you actually do the parts that you put in the chip. What does that mean for us? Well, that means that they can test faster, they can iterate faster, and we hope so they can bring down the cost at some points. I mean, not for us end users, but for uh, the use case that we can have into the... Uh, That's that a system. bit what uh, a CPU binning machine that bins at, uh, with a helium temperature would look like, I suppose, ish. I mean, same concept. Same it's concept. Probably yeah. with a robotic arm that just moves chips around and places them, pushes them down, cools them down to minus two hundred, boots them up at one point two volts or something. See if it works, and then just discard them and randomly move on. If you're in mechanical engineering and you want to design that kind of solutions, contact us. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I probably have some funding for building a machine like that, just for fun. Interesting. Um, so that's. Pretty much all the news on the hardware side. That yeah. was uh, we're supposed to do just news, and it's like yeah, actually it's quite a, quite a few things. Um, there is an, a side news that I wanted to do before we actually jump to the uh, mm -hmm. this one to the uh, to the modding scene. Uh, OBS, so Open Broadcaster, uh, the Open Broadcaster software, which is the software that most of the streamers use uh, to to stream their their stuff on Twitch is actually uh, releasing more and more update about what they're gonna do. Uh, I really wanted to, to give an update to you guys about that specific part because they launched a crowdfunding uh, campaign on Patreon and Open Collective mm -hmm. that will help them out to uh, focus on specific uh, features and way to develop the system uh, because this is still open source, right? Uh, this is open source, this is developed by a lot of contributors uh, this is not like a, a commercial software per se. Actually, it, it is not a commercial software period. Um, and recently they were up in the news because they teamed up with NVIDIA to increase the uh, algorithm for the uh, NV encode, which uh, yeah. encode on the, on the GPU for that. Well, because you have two options, you could encode either uh, brute force on the CPU or using QuickSync for Intel CPUs or the other NVIDIA one. And until now, everybody just didn't use NVIDIA because um, when you were using your GPU for playing the game, so you don't want to add more stuff on it. And second, um, the quality was not on par for the equivalent, uh, the same kind of bit rate. So it's not it was just faster or whatever, it's just it was uh, not quality kind of stuff uh, good enough. Uh, but with the new RTX cards and the latest drivers uh, on NVIDIA cards, basically now it's kind of like... A, Pretty much as good or better than QuickSync from one day what they were saying at least at CES from the from Nvidia. 
Um, so um, yeah, it's it's starting to be also a very interesting space because uh, we even see it when we do live streams. Uh, all the live rendering is always done on the GPU. Uh, when you have all your previews and stuff like that and it makes a lot of sense because in this news they speak a lot more about the studio which is the version of OBS where you have more previews right now OBS doesn't really have a preview unless you have one in the studio mode where you have one preview of what you queue to be going live and the one that is live uh, but if you want to push further the envelope and do a real studio software then basically you can see all your angles with their own previews uh, and you don't have but to that's really demanding through. It's very demanding because it's kind of like you would have all of those previews being rendered uh, and that's where GPUs can help a lot because those renders don't need to be high quality. They can just be quickly done. They can be dropped in FPS as well. They are just previews. They are just there to give you a cue of what the, that angle looks like. Um, but if you're producing high quality shows, maybe you want your previews to also be 1080p or at least 720 even though they are displayed in that kind of thing because if you're gonna push that onto bigger screens then the PC still needs to drive all that. Um, which is probably where they are going. From uh, from our perspective and the testing that we have been doing for the past years, uh, encoding on the CPU, as some of you guys said on the live chat, uh, encoding on the CPU always end up in a better quality, uh, but it's a little bit more taxing in terms of resources, uh, while encoding on the GPU is more efficient, but a, li uh, a little bit less uh, crispy, I would say. Uh, this is supposed to fix some of that uh, that issues as well. Uh, but that's, a uh, as usual, you always have to make sure that uh, in the end you can deliver the correct quality for what you're supposed to do. If you do a high speed FPS, uh, maybe you should look into testing different settings before you just yeah, I want this because it's new and just use it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's uh, good news for OBS. Uh, definitely support those guys. Perfect. Uh, modding news. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, Team Warning. Uh, that's the guys that uh, that's the guy that won the DreamHack Winter uh, Open Case Modding. Uh, blah blah blah. I can't remember the exact name for it. During uh, DreamHack Winter. Mm -hmm. And he was on the he was featured on the GeForce Garage on a video that was, yeah, was it it's not, yesterday or today? Yeah, it's uh, very recent. So he's presenting one of the mods that he did. Uh, I think that's a mod so, from so last recently. Year. GeForce did several videos, um, GeForce Garage on modding and stuff like that. That's one of them. Yeah. And and even though that's not one of the latest mods that he did, uh, this one is uh, pretty cool. It was old theme or around the uh, the Nvidia. Um, yeah. NVIDIA triangle and things. So that was a uh, pretty sweet to see Tim in there. Uh, he's the guys behind Dutch Lion Customizing. Uh, basically, that's his company doing uh, customizing for the for the PC. Mm. And uh, as I say, he won the um, Case Mode Championship in the DreamHack nice. uh, last winter. So we hope to have him on the show for, uh, one day uh, pretty soon. Actually, we tried to get him on the show for today. It was not possible. Uh, but for sure, that will... Uh, I'm keep trying. Yeah. yeah, keep trying. That was interesting as well with uh, with that specific case. Is he was telling the story that the vertical bracket did not exist uh, when he made that mod, so he had to be doing it by itself and just uh, modifying the case and uh, finding the support and so on to to make it happen. So pretty cool. Pretty yeah. cool. I like, I like your it. Stuff. Very cool. Still on modding. Build. Dot. Gg. Uh, we uh, mentioned that last time. That website. Yes, so that's the you know the the gallery or let's say the work log that you want to have for your for your for your mod. Uh, it's the PC part picker for modding, basically, because PC part picker also have a build section, but it's not so visual. It's not so nicely done for pictures. And, uh, yeah, and I mean those two sides are very similar in every way. Uh, those two sides make money by uh, having parts listed and Amazon referrals, and uh, build.gg just does a lot of contests with all the PC brands to have people win stuff. So this one is uh, organized mainly by Cable Mode and a lot of other sponsors. Uh, they will be offering $10,000 in cash price, uh, $5,000 for the first place, $3,000 for the second one, and third one. Goes up with $2,000. The votes are opening on March 7th. So that's going to be mid of next week. So that's going to be before the next show. And you still have time to enter and just put your own uh, build in there and maybe be part of the stretch prize uh, that have some extra cash to be unlocked, mm -hmm. per se. Uh, pretty cool to see that going on the, um, on, the, on the modding scene. 
Uh, it's pretty fun. There's quite a lot of uh, participation prizes as well. Yeah. I like the way this is. Uh, this is what we have been seeing from from the uh, HW bot competition as well. In what terms? Uh, you have participation participation prizes. You have yeah, yeah. Uh, different kind of prizes uh, for like the top. You have prizes even though you just submitted something. So I, I think it's cool. Yeah, I like it. So they select the winner is no. So the vote will be open and everyone will be able to vote for their uh, most famous one. I I, be, I hope there's gonna a, be bot paradise. I, I hope yeah, that's not gonna be too uh, too 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 much of an issue. Oh, it's good. Uh, the be, online yeah, voting, but we'll see how yeah. that turns out. Okay, well, we'll see. Interesting. Uh, last news for today will be a gaming news. The Division 2 open beta is actually on right now. So, this is the follow up from The Division, where you end up in a city that uh, have some kind of issues, I would say, and you have to fight with your different divisions. Make a, to restore the city and actually to survive as well. I haven't played that one. Uh, one. I haven't played the first one either. Yeah. I have it on my Uplay, um, but I just haven't got the time to uh, to do that. Um, the guys from Endgun Gaming uh, did mm -hmm. a few tests as well with the Division 2 with different kind of systems, like the minimum requirement, the uh, recommended requirement, and so on. So that's pretty uh, pretty interesting. It's supposed to go to launch. Uh, it will be launching. Sorry, on uh, on March fifteenth. The open beta. This is just the open beta from uh, from today, March first, all the way up to uh, March fourth. That's gonna be uh, the days for testing yep. the beta, and that's always you know, uh interesting to have the the very early test for it. You just have to register for the um, for the uh, for the beta, but yep. once uh, once that's done, you can just uh, switch uh, switch right into it. I think it's cool they do an open beta and like this people will be ready when the game comes out as well. And, and that means you have to download the game much be much uh, sooner. Yeah, as well. even though you know they might just do updates, but the idea is probably for them the servers for people to play multiplayer online and other things like that. I don't know how they're gonna do that exactly, but um that is cool. It's nice. Very cool, very cool. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Yes. Very nice. And uh, that's it for this week. So yep. I, th I guess we're just gonna uh Take stop the recording. Are, uh, take, some, take some questions from you guys. Uh, stop the recording so we can uh, upload that on uh, the different platforms for the podcast. You can find that on pretty much everywhere where you find the podcast. Yeah, uh, so Stitcher, Stitcher, you Spotify. Uh, what is that? The Google Podcast. Google Podcast. Podcast. Yeah. I don't know. They change the name all the time. Uh, iTunes for people that have uh, Mac stuff, uh, and then all the other like. Uh, Basically, find us on YouTube slash Overclocking TV for the live recording of that, uh, of that, uh, no, for the recording of that live version. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and if you want the live, you can go on twitch.tv Overclocking TV. Speaking of uh, Twitch, we will be going to TwitchCon in mid April in Berlin. So if you're going there or planning to go there, just let us know. We'd be more than happy to take some picture with you guys and maybe do one of the show from there. Maybe we could uh, organize a little overclockers meetup or uh, OMG meetup for everybody that's inter interested. I don't know. I wonder if there would be people interested in that. Might be, might be uh, good to start a Facebook event just to see. We'll see. Let's do that. Let's do it. See you next week. Can I stop?